welcome back to the uh, David 67 Celtic News YouTube channel, uh, Wednesday the 23rd of August. Uh, going to be a fairly brief uh, video today um, as there has not been terribly much uh, progress in the various transfers in and out of Celtic and no definitive news regarding the severity of Mike Navrocki's injury or on the expected time CCV is going to be out the team. Um, before we start, please like and subscribe. Subscriber number slowly building up. Uh, like and viewing figures slowly building up. And so it would be greatly appreciated um, if you could like and subscribe um, to boost the numbers, get me up the, the league tables, get me towards my first goal of 100 subscribers, and then 500,000, uh, etc. Uh, remember also there's a Just For Fun trivia question um, in the community section that a few of you are trying each day. Um, and um, thank you for those who are popping in comments. Uh, nearly all are nice and encouraging and positive and constructive. And I do honestly try to respond to any um, comments and explain the way that I think or how I see things. Um, as I was saying, uh, not much in the way of uh, definitive news of incoming or outgoing transfers. No update on the pursuit of Quentin Merlin, um, the extremely good left back at FC Nantes. Um, no uh, progress as to whether Celtic are going to pursue Xavier Mbu Yamba from Volendam prior to the end of the transfer window. Um, the situation regarding Daniel Pedence at Wolves appears that Wolves are uh, giving him the option of regaining his squad position and there is apparent interest in several of the other lower half English Premier League clubs in signing Pedence. And I think with his wage demands, that's much more likely Similarly, Ryan Fraser, probably more likely to go to a uh, lower half um, English Premier League club or one of the uh, promotion chasing, chasing championship clubs in England. Uh, Kieran Tierney's situation at Arsenal still not um, being resolved. Uh, Mikel Arteta not actually giving any real uh, update um, from reviewing the various football sites and Arsenal sites. Um, but it doesn't appear that um, Tierney is really in his plans, despite their apparent left-back crisis. Um, I think the only real prospect of him coming back to Celtic uh, in the short term might be a season-long loan, with Arsenal agreeing to, to pay the bulk of his um, reputed £120,000 a week. Possibly more realistic incomings would be Paddy Roberts coming in to be uh, one of our wide players. And um, the transfer of uh, Matthias Kiesgarden from Bromby um, would appear possibly to be a wee bit further down the line in that Celtic do appear to have had initial talks with Bromby um, and I've been told four million pounds would be the uh, the requested transfer fee. I think that is within Celtic's budget. Um, and uh, Paddy Roberts has played well in the last eighteen months for Sunderland, and does appear to be more settled there, um, and is attracting interest also from um, some of the other Championship clubs chasing promotion. Um, and I am sure that he would be uh, keen to come back to Celtic um, 
to play uh, under Brendan Rodgers again with the prospect of Champions League football also. Um, Diego, uh, sorry, Jota, sorry, Jota, our um, ex wide player who has had a brief time in Saudi Arabia, um, would appear to be uh, soon to leave. Al Itihad, most likely on a free transfer uh, as a free agent, which would then allow him and his agent to negotiate the best deal with a variety of clubs. Um, um, Two clubs that seem to have um, shown a lot of interest so far are Atalanta in Italy and Everton in the English Premier League. And it may well be that their um, wage structure would allow them easier to sign Jota. However, he did express a uh, great love of Celtic and uh, may well come back. And uh, it should be remembered that prior to Jota's transfer, there was a clause which would have um, repeatedly doubled his weekly salary up into the 40,000s. Um, and so it may be that uh, Jota chooses to come back to Celtic for guaranteed um, first team football and guaranteed European football. Um, to remind us of the great days uh, uh, that Jota gave us, um, going to include a uh, clip of one of my favourite goals that he scored, which was against Rangers in the 4-0 win. So, hope you enjoyed that flashback to a recent great day for Celtic with Jota's second goal, uh, goal the second in the 4 0 win that day. I think uh, the prospects of him coming back to Celtic are fairly low. Um, however, uh, it may be that he chooses to come back. For the first team football and his love of Celtic and uh, for that reason I have worn my uh, Jota t-shirt that commemorated the goal that day to try and increase Celtic's luck in getting Jota back. Uh, I think he was a great player for Celtic um, and uh, would have got better and better under us um, and so We'll see how things pan out over the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, hoping that there will be an update on the fitness situation and the injury situation at the end of today from Brendan Rogers. Um, but looking forward uh, to the game against St. Johnson at the weekend. I think we can safely say that uh, Carter Vickers Kobayashi, Welsh, Navrocki are all definitely going to be out, which would leave uh, Gustav Lagerbjelk, Liam Scales and Tomoki Iwata as the three real options. In central defence, um, one good piece of news is that Alistair Johnson is um, progressing far quicker than expected and he is even thought to be in line to return to the team at the weekend. Not fully clear at this point whether that would be as a starter or coming off the bench, but uh, that certainly is um, good news that it seems uh, very uh, certain almost that he's going to be fit for the Rangers match in a couple of weeks' time. I think uh, Brendan Rodgers 
will go for Liam Scales on the left side of defence to partner Lagerby Elk on the right. Um, some folk may be a bit concerned at that, but Scales did play very well for uh, Aberdeen last season, was a very regular starter for them all last season um, and uh, performed very well for them. Um, and so um, I wouldn't be too concerned about his ability to play uh, in central defence um, for the game against St Johnson. Hopefully the news regarding Navrocki isn't quite so bad as first thought. Uh, and if we're lucky, he may be back for the Rangers game uh, in a couple of weeks' time. One other um, option that um, Celtic are said to be considering is that uh, Alsa Johnson has often played uh, in central defence for Canada. And so using him and Lackaby Elk as a partnership in the middle might be an option and carrying on with Ralston at right back. Although um, I wonder about using uh, Iowata at right back instead for the Rangers game. Um, as Ralston's performances have been rather patchy in the three games so far. Interesting comments also from Brendan Rogers regarding the transfer situation and he quite rightly was pointing out that uh, given Celtic's finances, the TV contract money that Celtic have and the prestige of Scottish Premier League football, um, the transfer market that Celtic operates in uh, is by necessity the one below that which the English Premier League, Italian, Spanish and German uh, teams uh, are operating in. The uh, transfer budgets and the wage budgets for uh, those big leagues is far greater than Celtic can ever afford. And the last thing we would want is for Celtic to become financially not um, sustainable and to go down the tubes, as has happened to a lot of uh, teams in Britain. Might be a little bit unpopular, um, but I think uh, running Celtic uh, financially viably is important. Um, and thus far the board and the financial team have been doing a very good job at uh, recruiting from the middle market and selling to the upper market and getting a good two or three years out of a lot of players. I think that's a good uh, option. Um, one other observation, I think um, personally it's important to use the players in their best positions. Uh, many of the players, um, such as Taylor and Ralston, and even to an extent McGregor, very much uh, prospered and improved under Ange Postacoglu's system. And it appears under Brendan Rodgers, we've kind of gone backwards, um, playing a slightly slower a brand of football, less energy, less endurance, less stamina, Less, less attacking and more um, slowly building things up. Um, I think we should really be playing round pegs in round holes rather than square pegs in round holes. Um, and I did think actually for the five minutes or so at the start of the second half where Taylor came in to play more of an inverted fullback was actually the, the, the best I've seen him this season. Um, McGregor has been rather disappointing, rather anonymous in many of the matches. And he does seem to be uh, struggling without the inverted fullbacks coming in to support him in um, the defensive midfield third. Uh, and also seems to be struggling with Hatati um, only having played with him briefly. And neither Riley nor Turnbull nor Holm really were coming back to support McGregor 
in the uh, defensive midfield uh, part of the, the game. Um, Brendan Rodgers has a reputation for being a great coach and coaching players up. And so um, I wonder whether his hope is over the next couple of weeks, he gets Ralston Taylor um, coached up to play his system better. Um, although personally, I would not be averse to Celtic going back to the uh, Ange Postacoglu version um, as the front foot attacking, never see die, never stop attitude very much worked in Scottish football for Angie's two seasons after the first few weeks of teething difficulties. Fully expect Celtic to beat St Johnson at the weekend. Um, I think, as I said in a video a couple of days ago, I think this is a kick up the backside for Celtic. Um, and I think as was the case under Ange Postacoglu after the St Mirren 2 0 loss last year and after the two or three disappointing results around the split earlier on this year, I think Celtic will come again and I think we are in a good position to beat Rangers in the uh, fixture in a couple of weeks time. Um, as I am sure the players and the crowd and Rogers will all be very much fired up for that crucial fixture and could well see if all things went well that day, Celtic taking a six point lead over Rangers, which although it's really early days, would be a, a nice cushion to have going into the international window. And then it would be expected over the next couple of weeks after that time, that uh, Carter Vickers, Navrocki, Kobayashi, Hatati, all, all return to the team, whilst also uh, Tilio should by, be by that time fully fit as well. Um, and also, obviously, by that time also, we should have got another two or three players in through the transfer market and also know that the players that we have at the end of the transfer window um, are the ones we're going to have at least up until Christmas and into the early New Year. And so that also will give Celtic a lot of stability and a lot of, of um, ability to plan and move forward. Thank you for uh, listening today. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll chat again tomorrow. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, please add any comments in the comment sections, preferably positive and constructive. Um, and also remember the um, fun um, quiz question in the community section. So goodbye from me. Speak again tomorrow and hail, hail. Yeah.